Welcome to the Bloomingdale Public Library's program, Image Editing with Paint.net. In this online program, we will cover handling image editing basics using Paint.net. Paint.net is a free program available for Windows. Utilizing Paint.net's tools, we will crop, rotate, and adjust many qualities of an image. A lot of image editors lie at the extremes of the feature spectrum. MS Paint, which we may all be familiar with, is a bit too basic to accomplish anything serious, while tools like Photoshop can be overkill for most people's editing tasks. If you're a Windows user who only needs to make small modifications to images and screenshots, Paint.net is a great middle ground, it's lightweight, and it's easy to use. So now I'll show you some of the most useful edits that this tool lets you accomplish. The first things first though, you'll need to install Paint.net to use this tool. So you'll need to download it if you haven't already. This app is only available for Windows users as I mentioned before. It's unfortunately not available for Mac or Linux unless you decide to use Wine or similar, similar tools if you want to run it on these platforms. Confusingly, Paint.net is not the official website of this software. The URL is actually getpaint.net. However, it is free on its official website, but if you want to support its development, you can also go to the Microsoft Store and download that version. Once paint.net is installed, you can begin using it to create and edit images. A new canvas is created when you first open paint.net, but you can press File, then New to create a new drawing should you need to. You can draw, edit, and manipulate your images here. A list of various drawing tools is available in the left-hand side menu of the paint.net interface. This mirrors Photoshop a bit and other editing tools where tools to draw, select, paint, fill, and more are available. To begin using any of these tools, just click on them. In the bottom left corner is the color wheel. This allows you to change the color of any object or tool you currently have selected. For instance, if you selected the text tool, you could change the color of your inserted text by selecting a color here. If you need to resize your drawing canvas, press Image, then Resize, which will allow you to change the surface area of your canvas while leaving the contents intact. If you want to resize an existing image, press Image, then Canvas Size instead. This will scale your entire image up or down with options to prioritize quality over image size. Like with Photoshop, you can create complex images using layers. To insert a new layer, press Layers, then Add New Layer. You can change your selected layer from the Layers window in the bottom right corner of the Paint.net interface. Additional options including ones to duplicate or move your layer are available from the Layers menu. Paint.net allows you to quickly alter the color and brightness levels as well as add effects such as sepia or color inversion to your image. You can access these from the Adjustments menu at the top of the Paint.net interface. For more advanced special effects, you'll need to click the Effects menu. From here, you can manipulate your image with Photoshop style effects such as blurs and distorts as well as photo touch-up filters that remove red eye or allow you to sharpen your image. If you want to interact with the camera or scanner directly, you can make sure your scanner or camera is attached to your PC. Then press File then Acquire to acquire the image and import it into Paint.net directly for you to edit. 
If you run into trouble, you can quickly revert any number of your last performed actions using the history panel in the top right. Either press the undo or redo buttons or select one of the past actions from the list to revert back to that stage. Now let's go over some useful image edits that you can make in paint.net. Sometimes you need to block out personal information in a photo before you share it. Maybe you need to send a screenshot of a website or technical support but don't want your recipient to see your recovery code. Or maybe you want to share a picture of a funny letter you got but don't want to expose your address. In these and similar situations, paint.net makes it easy to block out sensitive info. To do this, first use one of the selection tools to mark the area that you want to blur. The easiest one to use is Rectangle Select, which you can open via the toolbar or by hitting S. After highlighting the area you want to block out, head to Effects on the top toolbar. You have a few different options for blurring the image. The two most common are Blur, then Gaussian Blur, and Distort, Pixelate. Both options have an intensity slider that changes the effect. Radius for the blur and cell size for pixelation. As you change this from 0 to 100, the intensity becomes higher and the effect appears stronger. You'll have to play with this value depending on what you want to distort and how heavily you want to modify it. Make sure to distort it beyond the point where anyone can read the original text. Once you're finished, click OK and you're all set. Another handy way to use the blur function is by slightly blurring everything except the focus of the image. To do this, select what you want to keep unblurred, then press Ctrl plus I, or you can go to Edit, then Invert Selection. This will select everything except what you just highlighted. Now you can use the blur tool like you did above and apply a slight blur to the rest of the image. This is a handy way to de-emphasize unimportant info without totally blocking it out. The next useful image editing idea is to resize images. Paint.net makes it easy to change the size of images. After opening an image in Paint.net, you can press Ctrl plus the letter R or go to Image, then Resize. This will open a menu that allows you to change the image size by percentage or absolute values. If you're uploading an image to the web that has specific size restrictions, resizing by pixel size is probably easiest. Otherwise, using a rough percentage is a good way to decrease or increase the size without much fuss. If you choose by absolute size, make sure that you check Maintain aspect ratio to keep the dimensions in proportion, which avoids distortion. You can also choose the resampling method that the software uses. In most cases, feel free to leave this on best quality unless you have a reason to use something different. While resizing is handy, keep in mind that digitally enlarging an image isn't perfect. It's asking a computer to add information that's not currently there, meaning it has to guess how it should look. Moving forward, even if you're not a professional photo editor, Paint.net has tools that let you correct the way your images look. To access these tools, open an image and then visit the Adjustments tab. The handiest one is Auto Level, which will automatically apply adjustments to make your photo look better, though results could vary. If you don't think an image looks quite right, Try running this function to see if it looks any better. It can be useful when scanning old photos. The black and white, sepia, and invert colors options are all one-click changes as well. Use them for easy adjustments without having to install a separate tool or use an online editor. If you're a bit more advanced, you can try the individual adjustment options like curves and hue slash saturation. 
These let you tweak the color balance, brightness, and other aspects of the images. It can be tough to use them well, but they have a lot of power if you get the hang of them. Well, how about if you need to touch up an image or apply an artistic effect? Paint.net includes a few handy options on its toolbar for this. You'll find most of them under Effects, then Photo. Red Eye Removal lets you fix this common issue by using any of Paint.net's selection tools to select the subject's eyes. Press and hold the Control key while you outline the target object. As long as the Control key is pressed, you can start and stop the lasso until the entire object is selected. Glow can add a fancy lighten effect for your next profile picture. Or try Vignette to add a dark circular border around the image. Similar to these, you'll find a couple of fun options under Effects, then Artistic. Try oil painting to turn your picture into a different kind of art, or use pencil sketch to make it look hand drawn. If you've only used bare bones image editors before, you'll really appreciate layers. This feature allows you to add new elements to the image without affecting what's above or underneath it. For example, let's say you wanted to place a logo on this image, but instead of adding it to the same background layer and worrying about messing up how the wall looks, you can simply create a new layer for the logo using the layers box in the bottom right. Now you can crop, resize, and adjust the color of the logo without affecting the background image. Let's go into a little more detail with working with text. Text is also a challenge. You can't just start typing the text without adding a new layer first, else it will become part of the layer that's selected in the layers palette. With the text in its own layer, you can move it, size it, duplicate it, rotate it, or flip it through the layers menu. But you cannot change the font, the color, or modify the existing text. So if you don't like the text colors or misspell a word, you have to delete the layer and re-enter the text. When the text layer is selected, you can use some of the special effects filters to enhance the text such as Effects, then Distort, then Bulge. You can also change the blending mode after the text is entered. Select the text layer in the Layers palette, click the Properties button, it's on the bottom right of the Layers panel, and looks like a wrench. Then choose a blending mode from the drop-down list, such as Color Burn, Reflect, Overlay, and more. So, play around with Paint.net and have some fun. Just remember to download Paint.net from the legitimate GetPaint.net URL. So you want to be aware of download links and other places that might have extra files attached to the Paint.net download. They could dump bloatware or junk files into your system and that would not be good. If you're looking for inspiration or new ideas with Paint.net, you can visit the creations page on their forum. The address is forums.getpaint.net slash forum slash 19-creations. From there you can see that there are a variety of different projects that have already been created. If you're looking for more resources or online classes in general, feel free to visit our website by going to the main page, then select Learn. At the drop down menu, you'll see on the third option, Online Courses, click that. Then Past Creative Bug and Gale Courses, LinkedIn Learning, formerly lynda.com. You can utilize this website for thousands of high quality video tutorials taught by respected authorities in their fields. There are many different topics. All you'll need is to select that link. Press the Get Started button and input your library card number and your PIN to utilize these courses for free. Thank you so much for joining me and good luck on your projects with Paint.net.